Thanks, y'all. Um, y'all have very pretty voices. I just had this image of like sound of music at your house. Do y'all, do y'all just sing to each other? Oh, do you? <laughs> That's great. We're doing our post-sermon chat now. So thanks for being here. Thanks for, for sticking around. Um, uh, what you can do is uh, ask questions. I'd be glad to answer those questions um, about the message. You can also um, uh, just make comments. What did you, what did you find? Uh, what, what did God teach you in this message today? And what I'm going to do is unpack a little bit more about our spiritual life not being based on our determination, but our cooperation and what that, what that means and how that fleshes out. And in particular, I want to tell you how that fleshes out Uh, like with my preaching. Um, One of the things that I uh, strive for is to to avoid, well, let me say it this way. The way that this lie that information produces transformation works out in preaching is that um, it's easy for me to believe that if I teach the right theology, if I teach God's scriptures correctly, that people will change. And that's not necessarily true because of Ezra 7.10. You see, he, he set his mind to study the Word of God and then not just teach it. If so, then, then that's what you have is you have a, a transfer of information. But he set his mind to study God's Word, to do it, right, to embody it, to live in it, and then to teach it. And for me, that's what I try and do with my with my messages is I, I try and, and, and as I'm writing them um, and as I'm putting them together and studying them, I, I, I try to em, em, embody them. And, and, and when I say try, I don't mean in a determination kind of way. I mean in a cooperative kind of way. I open my spirit up for the Holy Spirit to teach me about his word. I mean, Jesus is the one who wrote it. He's the one that wants me to teach it. Right? And so why wouldn't he show me how that word applies to me in my own life? And so what that means is that my sermons take time. Right? I, I don't write a sermon uh, the day before I preach it. I used to um, early on, but then somebody taught me, somebody discipled me on, on teaching God's word that in actuality, the more time a sermon has to simmer, the more time I have to embody it and live in it. And so now what I try and do is I try and have a sermon done at least uh, seven days before I preach it. And I mean manuscript it out. And y'all, it is a very rough draft. But what that does is it allows that message to simmer. And what I've been doing is letting it simmer before that anyway. But just putting it on paper does something. And so, 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 so that's the way it kind of um, uh, fleshes itself out, this, this idea of, of it's based, you know, our spiritual growth is not based on determination, but cooperation. And here's what it may mean for you. As I teach about the fruits of the Spirit, and as I teach about um, engaging in God's Word, you may be like, okay, I'm taking the steps, and nothing's happening, right? I'm, I'm trying to be with Jesus, and He's quiet. I'm trying to read God's Word, and I get nothing. And y'all, I get that. Like, there are times where I read God's Word in the morning, and I ask myself, I'm like, okay, what does it say about God? What does it say about me? And and I get it, and I can answer those questions, but there's just nothing um, transformative about it, right? There's no, like, aha moments. Y'all, that's okay. Here's what you do in those situations. When when you're living life with Jesus, and He's quiet, or you're engaging in God's Word, and, 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 and it's really nothing new and vibrant, then in those situations, you go with what you know. Right? And, and what you know in walking with Jesus is that he loves you. And so cooperate with that. Right? What you know about God's word is that there's truth there. And so cooperate with that. Maybe, maybe listen to, to a pastor preach that day. Maybe listen to worship music that day and open your spirit up to truth to transform you and to shape you. And cooperate with what God is doing. So I'm going to chime in real quick and look at some questions. Feel free to say hello. I'm also going to move my chair up a little bit. Um, Feel free to say hello and let me know that you're here. If you haven't already, uh, let's see what we've got. Um, 
All right, who all's here? I saw that um, John and Stacey Anderson are here on Facebook. Um, I see my son Luke is here. Hey, Luke. Um, watching at home. Um, Deborah is here. That may be Deborah Backen is what I'm thinking. Courtney Sanders, the Monstrolas, the Cranfords. Hello, Stacy Baker. My wife is here joining us from Bavard. That's where she is on a little mini retreat. The Caparellis are here. Uh, Mary Massey is here. Tom Zaniga is here. Brian Hinch, Megan Meadows. Um, Hillary Anderson is here. Hello. Um, let's see. I think... That's almost Julie Mitchum, Julie and Billy are here praying for y'all. Um, let's see, the Vernons are here. Hello, uh, MC is here. Hope you're hope you're feeling great. You're right, Brian and Jan did do a great job. Uh, a lot of just so you know, when you see the comments, a lot of people are very appreciative of y'all. So thank you for for leading us. Um, let's see if there are any questions for us here. The Blankenships are here. Hello, um, the Rosses are here. Hello, the Lyles the Lytles are here. Uh, the Vogels are here. Hey, y'all. Um, any questions that you have? Uh, Amy Flagler, no, I'm not going to sing now. They have a good voice. I do not. I save my singing for the shower. Thank you very much. Um, let's see, a great reminder of God's truth. Thank you. We all need a reset from time to time. Definitely needing some refreshing. Yes, me too. Uh, the Smiths are here. Hello. Hello, Micah. Thanks for watching. Um, thank you, Brian Jan. That was beautiful. Appreciate Fred and the Bridges for focus on prayer. Thank you. Um, let's see. Brian Jan's Bridges will continue after the sermon. Okay, there's that. All right, let's see if we've got anything on Facebook. Luke says, I dare you. I don't know what he's daring me to. I don't know that I want to know right now what he's daring me to. Um, let's see. Carol King also says, loved hearing Brian and Jan lead us and worship and prayer. Um, what I would love to know is uh, to let me know. Yeah, to let yeah, you, a lot of you are letting us know that you're here. That's good. When you talked about the gold nuggets turning into a brick with time, it made me think uh, that it takes fires to make that happen. Oh, that's good. Well, in God's word, it does talk about our life with Him is a refiner's fire, right? That 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 a refiner's fire takes these metals that are full, full of impurities. And he heats them up. And, and, when, and, and when you heat up uh, a metal with impurities, the impurities rise to the top. I think that's called dross, if I remember correctly. And, and, and he wipes that dross away so that there's something more pure left in there. And so that's definitely what God's word does. And it challenges us, uh, doesn't it? Like it shows us, it, it, it teaches us and it rebukes us, right? It shows us where we're wrong and it corrects us and shows us how to make those wrongs right. And then I love the part, too, that it trains us. Like, I always, I, I like to tell people, you know, you can learn in one of two ways. You can learn in the, in the lecture or you can learn in the lab. And if you learn in the lecture, you don't need the lab, right? And, and, and so if you learn in the training um, how to handle a situation before it becomes a situation, um, you don't need the, the rebuke and correction, right? Like, like you, you, got it, you got it in the training, which is good. And so God's Word does all that. Let's see, John and uh, Jackie Perry are here. Oh, Luke's, oh, okay. My wife said she thinks that Luke is daring me to sing. No. No. I am a secure man. I don't need to respond to dares. Thank you. Um, let's see, Blaine Miller. Hey, Millers, appreciate the comments on the table of contents I use all the time. I know, isn't that great? Somebody, I can't remember who now, um, uh, showed me that. Um, uh, no, actually, now I do think I remember the, the guy. Um, he's in Washington State now. I can't remember his name. Brad, Bra yes, Brad Kleenhagen is his name. And he um, was the first person to kind of disciple me. Right? He knew that I was new to the faith, and so he explained songs to me, like, like the, the hymn where it says, Angels prostrate, prostrate fall, like it means that they fall down in worship. I thought, because I wasn't too keen, I, it's like their prostate's falling out, like what is happening? And like I literally asked him that, and he's like, no, 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 that means to bow down, it's a different spelling. Oh, okay, okay, like I knew that, my, like I was there about the Christian faith. And so, so, so he, um, he, he showed me that little trip, uh, that little tip about knowing where places are in the Bible, which is great. Uh, can you give us a time in your life that God's word became food to your soul and fed you better than actual physical food? Um, 
there was, I remember um, uh, there was the first thing that comes to my mind. Um, I was doing a fast. I was doing a three-day fast. Um, and um, it's hard to say. I don't know if God's word was, was um, better than actual food, but here's what I noticed during that time. One, I, I apparently have a pretty strong fixation on food. Uh, and you notice that when you remove it for a time period, and it helped me to see um, if that energy is shifted into God's word and a relationship with him, the impact that that makes. Um, and so, so I don't know that, that that's the direct correlation, but, um, but that's the, the first thing that came to mind. Because I am still a little fixated on food. I love it. But God has also grown me um, in my engagement with his word, too. Uh, let's see. Brian Flagler says, uh, finding ways to serve others feels hard right now with COVID restrictions. Makes me more tempted to hole up in my home and consume information rather than doing what God is calling me to do. Any strategies for stepping out to do as Ezra wrote? Yes. Um, great question. Thank you, Brian. I think the first step, what would happen in your family, because um, they're the others that are the closest to you, if y'all began asking that question, what is God teaching you today? Um, and so it's not serving each other in a sense of doing something. It's serving each other in a way of being with people. Um, in a way that, that is fulfilling to the soul. And it also um, kind of helps remind you to, to, to learn from God um, on, a, on a daily basis in, in some manner, shape, and form. And so, so I think start there. I mean, you've got others right around you. And I know you've got others in your neighborhood. And I've met some of your neighbors. Some of them go, come to, to fellowship, so I know they're believers. So start there and ask them that question um, and learn with each other and, and from each other. It's a good question. Um, you can also, um, you know, we're serving people in the um, Ledgewood community, and so there are ways to, to pack and take food to them uh, as they need it, and so that's an area of service. And Amy, any, any other areas of service come into mind? Least of these, yeah, they need stuff so you can check with the um, Homeward Bound um, website. Probably the best way to find those needs. Is that where those needs are? Oh, that's right. Least of these is something completely different. That's right. They're, they're, the least of the, I was thinking of room in the inn. Least of these is a Saturday morning breakfast, and they always need volunteers to help with that. And then how do you get in touch with them? Okay, you can email Amy, and she can get you in touch with them. Uh, you might even be able to Google least of these in Asheville, and, and their information might come up, but we can get that information for you. So that's a good way. All right, let's see. Other questions? Oh, yeah, Luke Baker did want me to sing. Joking. I'm glad you're joking. Um, okay, great. Well, we've only got a couple more minutes. Thanks for, for chiming in with us for this post-sermon chat. Um, thank you again, Brian and Jan, for, for leading us through prayer and worship. Um, it was great, uh, great having y'all do that. I would like to do it again um, and not, you know, um, not just once, you know, like let's, I, I would love to wonder what it would look like if this was something that happened more than, than, than once. So, so let's pray through that for sure. Church, I love you, and I love being the church with you, and um, I will see you as soon as we can. Do uh, If you're able to join us in person, go online and, and RSVP. You, that registration is open right now. You can go ahead and do it, um, and I will see some of you on Sunday, and the rest of you, uh, you can engage with us online. Love y'all. Bye, y'all.